I am a board gamer. I've probably only really been a board gamer for like the last two years. And I kind of got into it mainly because my wife said your hobbies are all too expensive. So you need to find some way to make them more affordable. So I actually do a lot like of like... I like that board games is the cheap hobby when you see people that have the <laughs> shelves and shelves and shelves. Well, see, I'm not I'm not like one of those people that has to own all the games. Now I can't talk because I do own Kingdom Death Monster. Yeah. But I got it second hand, so I didn't fork over okay. four hundred dollars. You know, yeah, yeah, instead yeah. I just used the Warhammer models to trade for that. So I guess it still costs the same. Yeah. Luckily I have a one of my roommates is very into board games as well. And so we will buy, like, you know, probably half of our collection is owned by one and half is owned by, and at this point, I'm not even really sure who owns which ones, and, like, our families will give them for our birthdays <laughs> or Christmas or that sort of stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the one thing my family is annoyed by is they're like, man, it'd be nice to play, like, the same game twice. Like, every time you visit, you bring different games, like, Maybe bring the same game twice. <laughs> like, yeah, so we I'm just we just learned how to play that one. Yeah, we just learned. Quit bringing yeah. more. <laughs> I could definitely relate to that. Um, let's see what was it. My pretty much we had a game store here in town, and that was the only way I could go out and play board games that required more than two people. Yeah, so that that's closed right now, so it's a little rough. So my wife's having to deal with me forcing her to play games with me. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I'm lucky. I live in a house of. Uh, three other guys so we've been playing games a lot especially you know we always played games like a decent amount but especially now that like everything's closed and all that sort of stuff I mean for a while there we were probably playing games every single night the four of us together nice uh, yeah and it's nice to have that because you know there's some games where you're like man a two two players all right but it really works at three or four better you know I can, like yeah too. it's like two people it's kind of okay but it's not fast enough or yeah. you just and you end up holding all the cards and that's not yeah there's like a rule modification that's not as fun you know yeah that seems to be how most of the games with my with everyone goes here it's like you know i wish we had more people to play with because then it'd probably be more fun yeah yeah <laughs> you know we got two little ones uh six and seven but they probably don't know how to play most of the games we have there's some yeah, that I have. Give it a few years and you're going to be like, well, you guys exactly. aren't allowed to play sports or do <laughs> things like that. You just have to stay home. This is your hobby. This is your after school activity. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Times are sure changing. I mean, what yeah. kind of, so, so what kind of games do you like? Man, I, you know, I love games because, you know, I'm coming, my background, I'm a comedian. And mm -hmm. so I'm coming to games kind of with that filter on, right? I'm a, I'm a people person, I'm a, I, I like social interaction. So I think my favorite games, that being said, I like all different types of games. So there's not much that I won't play, but probably my favorite are games that just have a bunch of social interaction. You know, like Sheriff of Nottingham is one of my favorites of all time. Cause there's just so much like, trash talking and, and <laughs> deceit and, and stuff like that. I also really love like Bang, Bang Dice particularly, you know? Those are games too where it's like not super hard to teach, but there is a decent amount going on in them, you know? Because yeah. when we host game nights at my house, you know, it's my roommates, it's like we all, we define – we get games right now and we go, is this a house game or is this a game night game, right? Because <laughs> like, if it's like a three or four player with like a pretty good amount of strategy, that's a house game. We'll play that here, us. But for a game night game, we need stuff that's like easy to teach. People are going to get on board fairly quickly, you know, because we'll have eight comedians here and everybody's trying to be funny all the time and nobody's paying attention to the rules. And sometimes you're like, no, no, no guys i get it you're all funny and you all have jokes but like shut up for 10 minutes while i explain this game all right <laughs> yeah yeah the people here at my game store they're kind of all walks of life and so uh you definitely get some good perspectives and so there's yeah. like it's, uh we got a mainly the, we had to choose what kind of game we were going to play was it going to be one that was going to take hours to play yeah and be the only game we were going to play that night or were we going to bring a whole bunch of other small ones uh yeah i bought? mean i don't 
I don't have the patience for like the really long games. Like to me, I'm about 90 minutes. Like I'll do a game for an hour and a half and then I'm like, all right, well then like, what else are we going to play? You know, like I don't, if people are over for three or four hours, I want to play like three games. I don't want to just play <laughs> one game the whole time. Yeah. Have you ever played Dungeons and Dragons? Yeah, I did it a bunch when I was a kid. And that's like one of the funny things, right? Is that like, I think this is probably the same for a lot of people. It's, it's you did some things when you were a kid, then you didn't do them for a long time. And now you're like getting back into it, you know, kind yeah. of. Like, I, I will say I was more into Magic the Gathering when I was a kid. Like, and I even did a couple, you know, when I was like 12, I did some like magic tournaments, you know, and never did very well, but just like did a few of those sort of thing. And, and then, you know, played some Dungeons and Dragons with uh, with the friend I had, a, you know, I had a couple of Dungeons and Dragons books on how to like be a good DM and that sort of <laughs> stuff. But, you know, I probably, I probably hadn't played Magic the Gathering since I was like a freshman in high school or something like that. And I just, you know, got into other things. And it wasn't until maybe like five years ago that uh, I started getting back into it. And I was like, yeah, this is just like a really, you know, I think there's something to the fact of, you know, when you get a little bit older, you you want like structured hangouts, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's like when, you're, when you're 22, you, you might just like, you're fine just like going and hanging out. And now I'm like, what are we doing? We're just standing around drinking beer. I don't want to do that. Like, yeah. let's do something. Yeah, I'm bored. I want to be able to do something with my time. I already yeah. do nothing every other day of the day. So totally. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I mean, uh, I mean, I played Dungeons and Dragons. I, I will not play very much. When I was younger, I didn't really hang out with a lot of people. I was one yeah. of those kids. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So I never really played Magic the Gathering or any of that kind of stuff. So really, my first foray into board games was probably going to be like Zombie Side. Like oh, that was okay. probably one of the first games I played. Probably a mistake yeah. because that aim takes a lot of yep. time. <laughs> that's that's like a you know I mean it's not like a crazy complicated game, but it's that's like way more complicated than like <laughs> Scrabble or something like you know. Oh yeah, well I don't count those as board games. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I know. I think my I think my introduction to modern gaming was maybe Code Names. Okay. I think is like a great great game to get you into modern gaming because you know there's like a decent amount of thought but there's also like downtime so you can just be like talking to your friends while yeah. someone else is trying to figure out a clue you know i think i've kind of found out that that's where i'm gravitating towards you know i have some nights where they'll be like all right listen this is going to be the big game night this is going to yeah. take a couple hours but then there's some nights where it's like you know what let's bring all these small games so that we can have all these different matches and we can totally. all argue with each other and start to hate each other over time yeah I know, I think one of the things I might start doing after, like once we're um, all more comfortable, like hanging out, you know, again, mm -hmm. after uh, COVID dies down, uh, I think I'm going to do like a, right now I kind of do like random game nights where it's just like, I'll text a bunch of friends and be like, game night on Friday, who's open, you know, and like, we'll do that. But I'm thinking about like having a weekly game night and just telling my friends, these are the games we're playing tonight. Yeah. You know, and like, this is how complicated they are versus like a little sentence about them. And if like, that sounds cool to you, then come that night. And if not, like, I'm going to do it every week. So you yeah. can come. Yeah. Something will work out eventually. You yeah. Know, it's kind of like some of the smaller games that I've found that the people like are card games because yeah, they totally. go by pretty quickly. Um, but also just games that, you know, the, the rules aren't that hard. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to teach people every kind of, every day whenever you have something new, unless they actually like it, because you never know who's going to yeah, like yeah. what. So, uh, I mean, like one day I brought Exploding Kittens just to see yeah. what people thought about party games like that. Totally. Half of them love it. Yeah. The other half are like, man, we want something more. And it's like, all right, well, I got something for you. <laughs> so you Boy, I, have you else. ever played the game Skull? Which one? Skull? I don't think I have. It's one of my favorite games, and it's very simple. And I brought that recently to some people who who'd like never played modern games. I mean, this is like this is a game that probably has like 
a one complexity rating on board game. <laughs> so it's it's fun, but it's like really easy, and they could not wrap their heads around it. And oh, I was wow. like, I I was sitting there because I'm you know not that I'm playing with like hardcore people, but I'm playing with you know people that like games. Yeah, uh, and uh, and man, this one was people were like, oh man, what like skull essentially you have two things to do you can okay. you can uh flip uh you can bid on flipping coasters or okay. you can put another coaster down okay. essentially those are the two things that's all you can do on your turn <laughs> and when it would get back around to people they'd be like wait what can i do right now and i was like two things people it's two <laughs> things <laughs> yeah i i also experience that sometimes when i'm trying to explain the rules and i was like oh man this is gonna be fun when i start to see their eyes glaze over yeah, it's yeah. Like, oh man, they're already looking at their phones. This is gonna be a good time. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, one of the one of the games that I found was kind of difficult to get people to understand was uh, we had a game called Robo Junkyard. Okay. Um, it's a card game. You know, it took a couple of them playing playthroughs for them to realize that they actually liked it. But it's yeah. not it's not a complicated game. It's like Uno. Totally. But since it doesn't look like Uno, they couldn't wrap their heads around it. No. And then halfway through, once they finally got it, they started cussing each other out because they were starting to hate each other for the moves they were doing. So I knew that one was a good one and a keeper. <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, I do think we, we as people who like games, do take it for granted a little bit. Like how much previous knowledge of games helps you learn a new game, right? Oh, Where yeah. you're like, you're like, oh, okay. Like even if you're not a, like saying this out loud, your brain's going oh, this is kind of like this mixed with this. And I understand this mechanic. So then, okay, yeah, let's just, and then you just like kind of put these things together. Whereas people that don't play games are like, why are we doing rocket science right why, now? Why are there six different kinds of dice? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're like, no, one dice, it goes from one to six. That's it. That's all we do, you know? Yeah. Uh, oh, man yeah <laughs> so speaking of games what are what are some of your favorite ones like if you had to choose three what were yeah. the three that you'd say from a burning building or something like that boy i mean it still probably would be like sheriff of nottingham um because i there's just something about that game i i love the social interaction of it uh the game that i'm like that i've gotten in the last six months that i'm probably the most into is cartographers okay uh, it's really, really great. Um, it's kind of like, it's a, it's a, a flip and write, but it's kind of like Tetris where you're like drawing these shapes, but there's like a lot of different choices you can make and a lot of different ways to score points. And I like the thought, uh, the thought around it, like the choices that you have, but it's also like my, my roommate and I agree, like, I don't really know why I can't put my finger on why, but it's just like yeah. a meditative experience. Okay. There's just something about like putting these shapes together and stuff. You're like, man, I feel like I'm relaxing right now. You know? <laughs> yeah. I love it. Okay. Uh, yeah. So you got those. So you got those two and what was, and then, you know, if I want something that's like, I like push your luck games too. Like there's just something about that. Like, ah! <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's I don't just know. like at a big table yeah. and stuff. So so I I like Quacks of Quedlinburg a lot too for just that like push your luck element of it. Where you're okay. like, oh boy, what's it gonna be? <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so do you like more solo or group games? I know you like social I, interaction, but sometimes Yeah. I'm definitely I, I don't play a lot of games solo. I'll play games two player games a bunch. Um you know, because like sometimes there's just one of my roommates or, you know, yeah. there's times where I, I, you know, had a, was dating a girl that liked games. And so the two of us would play or that sort of stuff. So yeah. I don't often play solo because I think what I like so much about games is the social interaction. And so I want to have that, even if it's just with one other person. Yeah, I mean, it's not fun playing checkers by yourself sometimes. And yeah, I mean, yeah. like, like one of the games I played recently was called Techlandia. Yeah. And it's, uh, have you heard of that one? Uh-uh. All right, so it's essentially a uh, modern-day uh, 
Lovecraftian stuff. So you're going oh, to cool. infiltrate a Apple like complex to go see this new phone that's apparently going to end the world. You're trying to stay yeah, by yeah. everybody. And so one player, pretty much you can roam anywhere around the board. You have no one to race against or any of that kind of stuff. You made it kind of boring. Yeah. Like I, I could see like having more people on it, like three or four, everyone racing for the same stuff would make it more intense and yeah, more fun. It yeah. adds like more tension, right? You're like, oh, I'm going for this. I don't know if I'm going to get it. You know? Yeah. I mean, even when my wife plays games, she has, she plays Roman Cube a lot. And so she plays on her phone yeah. too. And she always plays against people. And I laugh so much when I hear her scream across the room that they took her move and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> but that's the kind of stuff that we enjoy. So, Yeah, totally. Well, and I, you know, I'm somebody that like, you know, we were talking about the like more casual games, the small box games. I think one of the reasons I like those a lot too is that you're not as invested in like the winner, right? Like, yeah. You know, if you're sitting down to play – a game for four hours, like I'm gonna get competitive, right? I'm investing a lot of myself in yeah. that. And it's like, you know, some of the small box games, I'm like, yeah, man, we're just hanging out. We're having a good time. Who cares? Who cares who wins? You know, I'm like, I'm gonna try to win, but I'm not gonna be upset if I don't. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think uh, so. Some of my top games that I like, uh, I don't, I have some solo games. I don't really play them all that much just because I, I also like social interaction with the games. I like, yeah. to, I like to mess people up on their stuff, even if I'm not going to win, <laughs> you know, just make it a hard time for them. But yeah. uh, I think one of them would have to be the Robo Junkyard, you know, like I was saying, because we played it okay. so much and just, it's a quick game and we just kind of, we can play it a lot of times and be angry at each other at the end of the night. All in right. A good, in all a right. good way, in a good way. I'll um, check that one out. Yeah, I don't know it. And then uh, one of the other ones is probably I do like more of the miniature heavy games, but since I also like Dungeons and Dragons, that's why I play Kingdom Death Monster. Okay. I, yeah. I don't. I don't know if I'd be able to save any other board games if I tried to carry that one out. You know, I think it weighs yeah, like yeah. four pounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, how much does that one cost. How much does that one cost? Well, yeah. if you if you buy it from the store. Yeah. It's like four hundred dollars. But that's because it comes with, it comes it comes with miniatures and stuff like that. That yeah. doesn't justify the price. No. <laughs> yeah. But that's just what they sell it at. I got it for like a hundred bucks. Nice. I, Good job. Because I traded some space marines I was never gonna use. Yeah, yeah. You know, so so that's that's the only reason I have it. But man. Uh one other game, I'm trying to think of a game that I always want to play, but don't get to play all that often. Uh it would probably end up being uh, – I play all these weird games. I have this game called So Long My World. Okay. No, I don't know that one either. So that one is kind of like a points gathering. You got to play uh, – you got to gather these feelings to play down on a card in order to have it okay. count as points at the end of the game. Uh, and so you got to fight against your opponents. You don't know what move they're going to go because you have a little screen that can't protect your tokens. And then you reveal them all at once and – put your token on whichever picture you chose and nice. then uh but it also comes with a solo mode if you get too bored but it's not one that's like uh it does not has nothing to do with the original game it's a totally different game as a solo okay. mode so it's at least two different games in one cool that's fun yeah it's nice when games just have those different feelings every time you play them you know yeah. i like games like that where you're like you're never gonna win this game the same way twice and that sort of thing. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, I mean we definitely have games that I'm like, man, I wish I could I love playing that game, but I just don't get to play it that much, you know? I yeah. Like what I we have this game called uh Bloodborne, the card game. It's it's based off of the um and it in it have you played the uh? I played the video game. Yeah. So they have a Bloodborne, the board game, and Bloodborne, the card game. And I have the, the card game. Uh, and it, it still has, like, a board to it and that sort of stuff. But it's, uh, it's kind of like, um, like an intro to a dungeon crawl game, right? Okay. Like it, it's not a dungeon crawl, but it, it still has those elements of your fighting boss after boss. And, yeah. you know, that, that sort of stuff. And and it's it's really intriguing because it's like semi-cooperative you know it's like you all are working together to kill the monsters but you want to be the only one that survives at the end so you're yeah. still 
kind of, like I like that aspect of it, and uh, and I just don't get to play it that much. You know, I I think it's like too thematic maybe for yeah. some of the people that I'm playing with, where they're like, oh, it's like got this like really intense artwork, and it's like oh, it is a dungeon call, and they're like, ah, we just want to like flip over cards and yeah. You know. It's like we don't. That looks too complicated. We just want to have fun. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we talked a little bit about why we like games. You know, you said you like it for the social interactions, but um, what can you remember? What the first game you ever really th played was? You know, when it comes like down to ever, like, or when I got back into it. When you got back into it, probably. It, I mean, I think when I got back into it, it was Code Names. That's uh, right. You were talking and, about that. Yeah, and it it was my buddy. Um, a, another comedian, Shane Moss, um, okay. who is very into board games. And uh, maybe like five years ago, he started hosting some game nights where like comedians would come over on nights where we didn't have shows or that sort of stuff. Yeah. And, you know, it was like a lot of, uh, it was like a lot of games like Codenames or, or uh, a King of Tokyo or things yeah. like that, where they're not like that hard, you know? Yeah. Um, but, but very fun and uh and i think that was the first time i came over and was like oh like this is like just a great way to like connect with other people and i really yeah. had fun with this and and so uh then i at the time i was living um with a lady uh in a serious relationship okay. and then mm -hmm. um she broke up with me and i ended up moving into that house with that guy shane <laughs> uh because they had an open bedroom and yeah. uh, and I so I moved in there after my breakup and so then I was like part of the game nights like kind of part of the hosting team right because I was yeah. now living there and then Shane moved out and after he moved out the rest of us were like I think we want to keep doing game night. like Shane was the guy that like started them but we were all like those are really fun so then we've kept it going since yeah. he left and, and now I've just gotten deeper and deeper you know with all the games i have and stuff yeah i think that's kind of like how how mine ended up going was it's always somebody else that brings you in you, you never really yeah. start on your own uh, and i think it's just because you don't really think of modern board games the way that we now do you know when you think of board games you hear like oh man you remember we're gonna go play monopoly or we're gonna go play chess or something boring um, yeah. Then, then whenever they actually bring it, it's like, oh man, this is actually pretty exciting. I never thought it could be like that. You know, totally. Dice, Dice Thrones was one of them. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, it's like, oh man, this is actually kind of fun. You know, it's different. <laughs> you know, I, yeah. didn't know they, I didn't know they made board games. And then you go look at how much they cost. You're like, oh, that's why I didn't hear about them. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, you go find the the ones that are more entry level and ready for the totally. kids, and and just ones that you could play that much. And so, you know, Dice Thrones probably one of them. Like I said, Zombie Side was another one, just because yeah. I came from miniatures. You know, I like to paint miniatures and build miniatures, and so cool. having the Zombie Side with little figurines and kind of stuff like that. All right, well, I can get behind that. So I probably yeah. never, I'm never going to paint them like everyone says they're going to. But you know. <laughs> so I don't, I don't have any games with you know, I've, I've, I suppose I've been slowly ramping up my level of complexity and stuff, like what I'm willing. Like I would say that, you know. Now I'm really I'm really focused on like medium weight games, right? Yeah. Like I still have a bunch of lightweight games for when other people come come over and that sort of stuff. But now I'm really on the medium weight games, but I don't have any games with miniatures. Uh, okay. And I've been thinking about like I've been doing some research about like okay, we're like if I get something, what's it? Is it gonna be Zombie Side? Is it gonna be like don't, Arcadia don't. Quest? I've heard really don't, good things don't about do that. Don't do it. It's a trap. It's a trap. Yeah. <laughs> Once you get in, you won't ever get out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, you'll start. You'll start gathering all your miniatures, going, like, "Man, I'll I'll get to these all one day." Yeah. I mean, I'm definitely somebody that like. I understand why people want to paint them, but also they look really cool. Not. Oh yeah. Them. <laughs> like that's what it like for me i'm like no i don't need to spend hours and hours of my life painting these because i already think they look cool <laughs> yeah and you know that that's kind of the way that board games have been in now just each year as it goes on so they just get better and better yeah you totally know? i mean the component like, quality is unreal 
Oh, yeah. You know, I've, there's some games where I'll open them up and say, these are technically just like, uh, I, I'm going to count these as tokens because I don't want to paint them. They look cool. But, yeah, yeah. And that kind of stuff. And, uh, but, yeah, with the miniature stuff, it's a, it's a sinkhole, man. It's a sinkhole. Do you have a favorite game with miniatures? With miniatures? Um, yeah. Man, we play all kinds. Uh, you know, I have uh, the Kingdom Death, of course. That's not really – it's almost like a whole nother lifestyle for those people. Yeah. To start if you have, if you ever joined those groups. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> have you ever played? Have you ever played Arcadia Quest? I have. Um, I'm not. I'm just not really into chibi art style that much when it comes to okay. like board games. I say okay, that even man. though my my art for my my guys are a little cheapy, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when it comes to to that kind of stuff, I do like semi realistic or like anime inspired okay. art styles, but. Cool. Uh, I mean, we we play all kinds of games. I'm I'm always open to play tabletop games where you put stuff on the table and it'll take a while to play, like yeah, uh, Gaslands or something like that. Okay, just because nice. you know I never knew I could put my Hot Wheels on the table. And, yeah. and so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fun. And so you just go with that kind of stuff. Um, but honestly, I I don't really like I don't like the games where you have to so like Warhammer where you got to do whole, all one side takes their turn yeah. and then the other side gets to go it's like well i didn't get to use half my stuff i don't yeah. like that i like the uh strategy like if interacting in between actions and stuff totally. like that so that's why a lot of board games i like probably like them more than miniatures right now just because you do get that interaction in, in between each turn i do like the player interaction of stuff too i mean i'm not you know there are some games where it's it's like yeah you're playing a four-person game but you're like just in your own world the whole time right yeah. you know, where it's like you're not really even paying attention to what anybody else is doing and those aren't my games because i want to be you know i know some some a lot of gamers don't like take that games yeah i there's something i like about them where am i i'm just playing with my buddies and i'm like ha ha got you you know yeah yeah i like those kind of games i just can't play with my kids because i'll make them cry so they take that oh. it's like oh, oh no, no. Yeah. Like then, I, then, I, then I suffer because I have to listen to him to yeah. complain to me. It's like you did, you cheated. It's like no, that's a normal card. But yeah, oh I, man, I do. <laughs> the worst one I ever had like that was I was playing. Do you know the game Cash and Guns? I don't think I've seen it, it yet. It's just a party game. Like okay. it's very fun, but it's very easy. I mean, you you're all holding like a foam, like rubber gun, like a a foam gun. And on the count of three, you're, you're, you're putting a bang or a click card in front of you. So sometimes you're intentionally missing someone. And then you're just pointing guns at people and you can either duck or try to stay in and gamble. And, yeah. you know, whoever survives gets to like split the loot in the pot. Okay. And uh, I was playing that with my friends a couple of years ago. And it's a very easy game. There's, you know, it's fun. There's a lot of social interaction, but it's, it's very easy. And their, like, six-year-old kid was playing with us. <laughs> and, like, he was totally cool pointing his gun at other people. Yeah. And then no nobody pointed a gun at him for, like, three or four rounds. And then finally someone pointed one at him. And then he just started crying, <laughs> like, immediately, where it was like, no, not me. Don't yeah. point at me. It's like, I'm not supposed to be chosen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that reminds me of, have you ever heard of Throw Throw Burrito? Yeah, yeah, I know that one. I yeah. mainly got that game just so I could throw burritos at my kids. Yeah, but, totally. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> so we're talking about the kind of games we enjoy, but what about, what do you look for when you look at board games and that kind of stuff? Like, what kind of game design? Are you looking for the art? Do you even care about that, like, gameplay-wise? I definitely, I definitely care about the art, but it's not the first thing that I'm looking for. Yeah. You know, for me, I'm not into like really cutesy art, you know? It doesn't have to be realistic, but it has to be like cool, you it know? Has to, it has to draw you in? Yeah, it has to like draw me in and be cool and like, oh, that looks, that looks like, I'm fine with cartoony. It just can't be cutesy, I guess, yeah. for me. Yeah, you I know? can understand that. And, like, a good example of that to me is, like, um, Bunny Kingdom. Have you played that? Like, Bunny Kingdom, I mean, that sounds super cute. <laughs> and, you know, I was like, oh, boy, I don't know if I want to play this. And then 
And then you check out the artwork and there's like bunnies with like armor and swords on it. And yeah. there's other stuff and you're like, oh, okay. Like it's not just like fluffy bunnies. It kind of reminds you of uh, Skulk Island. Yeah, yeah. Or sorry, Skulk Hollow. Yeah. And uh, uh, I mean, just that kind of art style where it's like you, you have the animals, but they're all armed to the teeth and all that yeah. kind of stuff. It and could look like, a little bit artsy, but. Yeah, totally. You know, uh, I definitely think um, the main thing I'm looking for is player interaction, yeah. right? Where, you know, and, and there can be a lot of different ways of player interaction. It can be, it could be social deduction. It could be area uh, control. It can be, you know, all, all, all different types of stuff when it comes to that. Just depends on uh, what you're looking for for today. Yeah. You know, and, and again, like, I guess I'm a bit of a chameleon when it comes to games, because really what I'm looking for is, is it fun? Okay. Like, I can have fun playing, you know, exploding kittens, or I can also have uh, fun playing something that's like, you know, Descent, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, where it's like way, those are wildly different <laughs> games. Yeah. Uh, I mean, having fun is probably one of the most important things. I yeah. Mean, I, I, I'm a fan of sometimes seeing some pretty stuff with it, you know, like production value on it. Okay. But I also I also understand that sometimes the fun games don't look super fancy. Yeah. So that I think fun is probably one one of the most important things. Gameplay probably also one of the most important things for me because I don't want there to be a lot of downtime for a lot of these yeah. games where it's like, hey, how long are you gonna be on your phone? It's finally your turn. They they like totally tune out of the game and kind of stuff like that. Yeah, I I totally I totally agree with that too. Where you're like, you've got to be involved. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's kind of, it's one of those things where you look at it as like, you know, it's a fun game, it's a fun concept, but when we're actually playing it, it does it go fast enough? Like, it, I want the pace to also be there, you know? It's, it's yeah. like one of those games where it's like, oh, you got like 10 minutes between each turn because they're going to have to figure out all their stuff. or Yeah, yeah. All that kind no, of I, thing. I'm not into that either, where you're just like, boy, I, I, wanted, I want this to move, you know? Yeah, it's like if I wanted if I wanted downtime, I would be at home just watching TV or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But uh, let's see. Trying to, I'm trying to think of some other things that I like when it comes to to games, the designs, or like what I'm looking for, you know, other than like the fun. Um, how about how do you feel about when they make them like really easy to access for like different kinds of people say like colorblind or all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I think that's great, man. I, I think that it's nice that people are, you know, starting to consider that more too, mm -hmm. you know, I, it's probably long overdue. Right. You know, I, I think right now, not just with like um, colorblind or other stuff, but I think there's a push in the industry to get designers of diversity and stuff like that. Where good, yes, like you want, you know, um, to For have. Everyone. Yeah, I mean, and and to me, it's like I want different representate. I love games, and I want other people to love games, and so I want there to be a bunch of different types of games because, you know, I so many people right i come from the entertainment business and, and this is a big conversation in like tvs and movies where you know the, the reason that we want some diversity on screen isn't just for those people that are getting that job it's yeah. for the 10 year old at home who's seeing themselves reflected in media and then now thinks oh i can do this this is an option for me yeah. this is how i follow my passion and I think the same holds true for board games, right? If, yeah. if every single character in every game that you're seeing is just like a straight white male, well, you know, eventually you're like, oh, I guess games aren't for me. And it's yeah. like, no, no, games are for everybody. You just got to find your, so I want there to be a bunch of representation because I want more people to play games, too, yeah. you know? I do feel like the uh, storytelling and the world building of all games have gotten a lot better over the last couple of years. Yeah, I, mean, I agree you, with that, too. You look at some of the little ones, and then you go to, you know, these new games coming out that do deal with different cultures and stuff like that, and they're really good. They actually get the influ – they get the feedback from the, that culture to say, hey, is this okay? Because I don't want to yeah. put something wrong in it. And yeah. So they, it's just it's just the listening part of things. I like the fact that people are listening to each other more when it comes to board games. And, and I, like, 
there's a game, uh, one of, a game I got, I don't know, three months ago or something like that. And I really enjoy it is a game called Rap Gods. Uh, okay. I saw that one. I haven't played it yet. It's, it's really fun. Uh, and it's not like, it's about like the rap industry. You know, you're trying to like increase your, you're not rapping. Like, yeah. and I think some people, you know, <laughs> that would scare them away if you're like, man, I have to come up with it. No, no, no. You're just, you're playing as a rapper. You're trying to like yeah. increase your mic skills and your street cred and get more swag and like earn gold records and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's, it's a game that anybody that likes games would enjoy because it's a game full of choices. You know, it's like, am I going to focus on this resource or am I going to go for these bonuses or that sort of stuff? But one of the reasons I like the game also, not just for the fact that it's a good game, is that it's totally a game that might get people into games that don't necessarily think about games, right? Yeah. Like I have I have some friends that love hip hop music that don't play a game. And it's like, well, how about playing a game about hip hop music? <laughs> you know? And it's like, oh, I would do that. And then you get them into it. Now they're like, oh, this is like really fun. Like this is this yeah. is a great game. This is a this is a great a great game regardless of theme. And it just happened to be that this is a theme I haven't seen before and it's brought me into the hobby, you know? Yeah. Um and then they go all over the place too. There was one about uh, vegetables, like learning yeah. what, what foods are healthy and which ones aren't. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, of course, with my kids, I'm like, cool, that's a card game I can play with my kids. And then, exactly. But then there's also just the other ones where it's like, if it's something that I've never been interested in before, but there's a board game out for it, I might try it. Yeah. You know, just to see if I if I like that kind of stuff. You know, it does help if you are already invested in that kind of stuff because you'll get all the little subtle things more than and most people will. Yeah. But you no, know, overall sure. it's, it's, it's always fun to try new things. Yeah. And you know, we're talking about how do you look for a game and stuff like there's definitely like mechanics. I like more and less than others, you know, like, yeah, I like take that stuff. I like things like that. I'm not as into worker placement because <laughs> it's just like, okay, we're just kind of, in our own worlds and we're just setting stuff out there and it's yeah. like it, it's not i'm I, it's not that i won't play a word replacement game it's just not the ones i seek out yeah well i mean yeah with those ones it feels like you're just kind of racing against each other but you're all yeah. are on your own there's no yeah, exactly you're just kind of here and then oh you already put someone there okay well then i'm going to come back here and then i'm going to put you know and it's it is not as much like interaction with that one i think uh one of the ones that I haven't really gotten too much into yet was the dexterity mechanics where you have to flick stuff oh. and throw stuff. Mainly because yeah. I already know I'm not good at it. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I haven't, um, I haven't done a ton of it, but I've gotten a couple recently that okay. I'm actually having a real good time with. Uh, I got this game called Flying Goblins. Okay. And essentially, you're just, you know, you have a catapult and you're putting a goblin on a catapult and then trying to catapult goblins into like the box becomes just a series of rooms and you get like <laughs> you get coins or diamonds or different things based on which rooms you get into and so okay. it's like oh this is like to me i go oh this is like a great game to like get people into games there's like a there is like it's not that there's no strategy right you're still trying to like aim yeah or certain rooms and you can you know you can go after a certain resource more than another and that's like a good strategy but in the end you're just flinging goblins like anybody can get on board yeah you're doing that and you know in person and you know from yourself it's like man i can get better at this if i keep playing it like, yeah totally i mean those those are always the fun ones um speaking of board games have you ever gotten bougie with one you know like went overboard buying extra stuff for it or making like inserts or any of that kind of stuff have you ever gotten into that kind of stuff i never have and i feel like i'm gonna get my gamer card revoked <laughs> <laughs> for saying that but like i'm not a huge expansion guy yeah. uh, i know a lot of people because to me I, I guess some of it is like there's so many good games coming out all the time oh, that yeah. i'm like I'm like, oh, I want to try, I want to try other things. I'm not going to spend my money on adding stuff to a game I already have. I want to try something else. Yeah, and that's you know? a smart take. I mean, 
it's like when you see all these Kickstarters now where it's like it's five hundred dollars for the all in. And it's like, but that's like a lot of different things I could buy. That's what I mean. It's like, yeah, do I want to spend two hundred dollars on a game or do I want to get, you know, six games? You know yeah. what I mean? So and and I guess I'm more of the like I'd rather go for the breadth rather than the depth because I just like I think I'm that way like in life anyways like I've always kind of been someone that has a bunch of different interests right and yeah. so it kind of just fits my personality I think that's probably one of the reasons why I became a reviewer was because uh, it forced me to play different kinds of games and not just get yeah. sucked into one you know there there are some games where it's like yeah I'm good invested in this just because I want to but but I'm at least getting to experience other kinds of like, yeah, I don't really like these ones or these are the ones I'm going to look into some more. Totally. And I think that there, again, like, like I was saying earlier, it's like, there's, there's a game for everybody. Like, I don't think there's a person out there that just wouldn't like any games. <laughs> Maybe they haven't found the game that's right for them. Or you they know? don't have a soul, you know, one of those things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe serial killers don't like games. But, it, it, that might like, be, that might be, or no, I mean, yeah. they, they might like uh, some dexterity games or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, to them, the killing is a game. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so <sighs> but, but I, I, I think that that's one of the things I think about where, like, sure, there are sometimes games you, where you're just like, this is not a good game. But most games, I'm like, oh, I could see who would like this. Yeah. Even if I don't like this, I get that there are, like, this would be great for this type of person. You know? Yeah. This type of person that likes this type of thing, this would be a great game for them. Oh. Uh, so, I mean, so you haven't even bought, like, a bag or anything to carry to games or any of that kind of stuff? Oh, I do have a backpack. Uh, I have right, a board see, game There backpack. you go. There you go. You don't have to lose your card or anything like that. Okay. Right. That, we'll, we'll say that counts. All right. You All right. It for, you yeah. bought it for I do board have a games. board game back. <laughs> yep. I did. I did specifically. Well, I was tired. I was putting them into like reusable grocery bags and then they like fall open and all the components go everywhere. And so I think yeah. probably like a year ago, yeah. I got a board game backpack. Nice. Uh, so now I can, you know, stack them up in there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> see you're, what, you're safe you're safe i'm at the point now where i my next that's really my only board game specific one besides we probably have a hundred games here or something like that in our house yeah. and one of the cool things the my house that i'm in came with this really cool like hutch built in so it's built into the wall oh nice you know it's like if we were fancy my we might have like nice china in there or something like that but for us, it's just all board games. I mean, the hey, whole thing's just filled with board games. That's old school stuff, man. You got to fill it with whatever you want now. Board games, there you go. Yeah. And, but I, I feel like I'm close to my, my second big, like, gamer accessory purchase is we've gotten to the point where we've filled up the Hutch. <laughs> now we have stacks of games on the floor, like, right next yeah, to Yeah, yeah. I'm like, Boy, I, I guess it's time to like get another shelf, you know, to to buy uh to buy some type of shelf to put uh to start putting more games on. Yeah, okay. that's, how I, that's how I feel. I have my my closet, and I look at my closet, like, man, I really don't want all this stuff to fall on me one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so I probably need to get something else. Yeah. <laughs> So do you, when you arrange your stuff on your shelf, do you do you put the games that you like more in the middle, or do you just try and just put them wherever. I just, I'm just trying to arrange them for space, man. <laughs> I'm just trying to get as many in there as I can. You know, it's like, I guess I have sort of like the bigger boxes are in the middle and then the little boxes are like on the side because I can put them yeah. in the nooks and crannies and that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's, you, you don't want to be a conversation piece or is it a conversation piece where they're like, what the hell is all that? <laughs> well, <laughs> I like that it's a conversation because our – our big built-in, the top half of it is, like, smaller, but it's glass. So you can see games in there. And, you know, maybe there's, like, I don't know, 25 games in that top half. So someone comes over and they go, oh, yeah, you got a bunch of games, you know. But yeah. then you open up the doors of the bottom half, and it's and just like, bah, 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 bah. and everybody's like, oh, you yeah. have a lot of games. Then it cuts to the hoarder's title and all yep, that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. 
Yeah. I've always I've always felt like that. It's, you know, I get, it's like I really don't want people to know how many games I have. I just want them to know <laughs> I'll bring them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, that's the hardest thing. The hardest thing for me to do in the world of games is like when friends or family that aren't like super game people are like, yeah, come over, bring a game. And I'm like, J just one? Like, how do, how do I yeah. pick, how do I pick one game? <laughs> like, oh boy. And then I'm always like asking like, well, what kind of things do you like? What do you, and people are like, dude, just bring a game. Like, I don't need that. I'm trying to like have them fill out a survey so I yeah. can like bring the right game for the right situation. And a lot of times they have no clue at all. They're like, oh, you know, it's like yeah. they'll, they'll, they'll give you the easy ones. Like, oh, well we like to play Sorry. It's like, yeah. but none of my games are like that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what I, inevitably I can't like, my cousin invited me over to uh, have dinner a couple of weeks ago and she was like, bring a game. And uh, so I was just like looking at all my games and I was like, how many games do you want to play? And she was like, probably just one, you know? Yeah. Uh, so I brought five because I was like, I can't. <laughs> like, I, I mean, we only played one, but I brought five so that I could be like, okay, this is this game. This is this game. This is this game. Which one sounds most interesting to you? You know? Yeah. Yeah, speaking uh, of that, when it comes to people that don't play board games and all that kind of stuff, how do you feel about, you know, you said there's a Bloodborne game, but then there's like Dark Souls, and I think they did Horizon Zero Dawn was one yeah. of them as well. It's like, do you think, honestly, I, I'm not really into those kind of ones because, yeah, they have miniatures and that kind of stuff, but they're just like thrown out there. They're kind of like, yeah. kind of like the uh, direct-to-video things that you see I, for... <laughs> I agree with uh, any, a lot of the games that are, built on pre-existing IP are just like, oh, we know we're going to make money with this because yeah. there are fans of that IP already. So the game doesn't have to be that good. Um, and we can just put it together. You know, I, I think early on, I, I love the movie, The Princess Bride. And early on in my getting back into the game, into games, I bought a Princess Bride board game because I was like, I love that movie. Yeah. And not having known like the sort of reputation of their not being, and the game was like not good at all. And I was like yeah. so mad because I was like, "How dare you ruin the princess?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I've experienced that with uh, just being around in the board game community. I mean, you saw the Evil Dead Two one when that happened. Everyone was flocking towards because they love that, and then unfortunately yeah. that that guy just ended up uh, going bankrupt and leaving with all their stuff. They never yeah. got their product until so someone else came through and came with it. But um, you have some companies, the Steamforge game is the one that makes all the uh, the uh, Horizon Zero Dawn and Dark Souls okay. and all that kind of stuff. And they just have, unfortunately, in the community, they have a reputation of taking a while for their stuff to come out. Yeah. But, you know, everyone's kind of just accepted it, you know, kind of like how, you know, Kingdom, Kingdom Death's no, no different. You know, it's like, what, five yeah. years until our stuff comes out, if it ever comes out. <laughs> I guess to me, it's it's okay as long as your expectations are right going into it, right? Yeah. You know, if, if you're like, okay, I want to back this or buy this or whatever, and I understand that it's going to be a while, then that's a choice you can make. It's when it's when that's like stuff isn't honest, right? Where it's like, yeah. you're going to have this game in three months, and then you're like, it's been three years. Like, now I'm frustrated because if you had told me it was going to be three years up front, I could have made the choice then whether I was backing it or not. Yeah. And uh, have you ever backed a game on Kickstarter? I have not, you know. Uh, I have, see. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to have to take that board gamer card back. Then, I, I know, guess. seriously. Uh, uh, I've always just, uh, for me, I've always just preferred to, because I'm playing with so many people that yeah. aren't like hardcore gamers, they're, comedians first and that sort of stuff because that's a lot of like the people that are playing games with me i i would rather play a game that is easy for them to buy because one of my favorite things is like when i pull out a game and, and i have a lot of people that are like oh i bought that game because we played it at your house yeah and you know so if you're not a gamer you don't know that there's like a ton of games on kickstarter and all that stuff like i'd rather play a game that anybody can go buy easily like right away yeah uh just because i want them to like 
be into it as well, you know? No, totally. I mean, there's, there's definitely people that like to wait for retail to come out for a lot of things. And so that's, you know, I'm like, I'm like that when it comes to like electronics, it's like, you know what, I'm going to let the first people get a hold of that and figure out what all's wrong with it. (laughs) Yeah, totally. But I also, you know, that being said, even though I haven't backed a, a game on Kickstarter, I, I think, I think it's like such a valuable tool because the quite frankly i wish like a lot of other stuff was kind of had that model because essentially yeah. all you're doing is pre-ordering it yeah I you're mean, doing su- supply and demand but that's, you're making that's the what supply. i mean it's yeah. like it's it's okay if if we have a hundred people back this then maybe we print a thousand of them and we try to get out and if we have you know fifty thousand people back this well now we know what we need to be doing now we know and you know it's it's like i wish i could do that with like my album you know like uh my comedy album where it's just like hey put it out there like who wants to pre-order this if you do then i'll have some money to put into the production of it and i can make it better for when then you get it than i would otherwise you know yeah i've seen i've seen some uh artists on kickstarter as well yeah I think even Jack Black did one. And I definitely think it exists, but it feels like it feels like with board games, it's I would say more board games do it than don't. You know what I yeah. mean? Like it it even like huge publishers when you're like, man, you guys have a huge like email list and all that sort of stuff. Oh yeah. They'll still do but they'll still do Kickstarter because they want it for like the hype and stuff like that it's the hype but also they know exactly how many units they need to produce so they don't oversell yeah or, yeah or like undersell it's like hey we've got a thousand backers that means we could probably make two thousand and be okay because we'll still be in the green yeah I, I like that for the young the the new art new up-and-coming creators totally. and like that because it gives them a chance to step into that business adventure like no no way you other could before yeah but, yeah you know, sometimes they end up facing the most problems either because they don't research enough or, or that kind of thing. And those are people that usually people get upset about whenever it comes down. It's like, hey, yeah. where's our game? You, you promised it to us two years ago. It's like, yeah. It's like, but they're still working on it. They're just trying. And unfortunately, it's just not working out for them. Yeah. it's a. I have a lot of respect for anybody that takes risks in anything, right? You know, it's it's pretty easy to just, you know, sit at home and and – not take risks so i have respect for people that take risks but it is frustrating when it like doesn't work out you know it's like yeah you you thought you could do this and you're just not being able to pull it off yeah and luckily we don't see that happen all too often in in, in the board game world or anything like that but when it hits it hits hard yeah i know i everybody talks (laughs) yeah you know it is pretty crazy how big the world is but how small it feels oh yeah you know i mean especially you know just looking around at who all are you talking i mean look at us we're two different states and we're talking to each other yeah, right now totally and uh yeah. it's in a way that i never would have even thought i mean the yeah. other things like conventions do that too but those aren't happening this year yeah it's not not in the way they were um i think they there was the uh the uk expo recently is the one that's doing an online tour like they have a different sections for like life, life plays and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, and I think that's kind of helped with all the digital content producers kind of like make their way to the front. It's like, Hey, look, now we're needed. Like we couldn't get to those kind of things before, but look, now I can create all this content for you. Cause it's, yeah, what, yeah. it's what I do. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I mean, how do you think that the, uh, the board game world's changing a little bit just now with this uh, no distance, the distance well, between each other you know i think people are probably just in the short term probably going with smaller print runs yeah um, just because it's like well you know the conventions it's like a lot of these publishers just sell a lot because of people walking up right things oh, like yeah. good presence and stuff like that so if you don't have that like i think probably a lot of people are doing smaller print runs yeah. I wonder I wonder if I think this is probably something that has already been happening happening before COVID, but this probably accelerates it, is that I'm sure a bunch of 
uh, places are really highly looking into one and two player games. Oh know, yeah. Where that's what I mean. It's like, that was already something that was happening before, but like now I bet there are publishers that are saying, this is a great four player game. Come up with a solo mode and get back to us. Yeah. Like, it's like things I, they never thought they would do. Yeah. Like I don't want this game unless there's a solo mode for it. Yeah. You know, I, I can see that happening with, with some games, you know, there's some that that would be impossible for just cause that's how they're totally. designed. You know, I feel like party games are probably hurting a little bit right now. Just I agree. the nature of them is you want lots of people playing them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's just, you know, two player games. There's, I think those are starting to show more prevalence now just because, Hey, there's something that I can play right now without having to get large groups together. Just that kind of yeah. stuff. Um, but speaking of that, I know you have a game. I, I do have I, a game. I stalked you on, hey, on all hey. your sites and all that kind of stuff to see see about it. Uh, so tell us a little bit about it. I know that, I know there's an image that you can share too. Yeah, you ready for that right now? Yeah, yeah, we can do that part. All right, there it is. Boom! Look at that. All right, who draw? Who drew it? Look at my name right there. Uh, <laughs> uh, we uh, we hired an artist. Um, who drew the actual like character stuff and then Adam the guy that I um the guy that I designed it with yeah uh, he is a graphic designer and so basically someone he didn't illustrate it and we we had like full bodied characters in it you know okay. so this was just one of the characters and then Adam kind of stole the face and then put this all together in in graphic design sort of stuff Okay. So, yeah, so, I mean, it, it's it's kind of like Adam and I make a good team because uh, I'm good at, like, writing the game and, and, and coming up with it, and he's, like, great at the laying it out. Like, it would look – it looks so good because of him and all that sort yeah. of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's like I wrote the rule book, and he did all the design and layout and all the cool stuff for that, you know? Okay sort of thing so what's um, it about so it is a party game <laughs> so it is it's a you know obviously as a comedian it makes sense that i am making a funny game you know yeah. um so the game it's kind of like uh mad libs for silly insults okay uh, so i don't know about you but like i'm somebody like i really don't like cards against humanity it's so boring it's just the same every time yeah so I think this game is it it's like almost the anti cards against humanity. Like Okay. <laughs> it's so the way it the way it plays is everybody has life cards in front of them and uh those life cards are just going to be aspects of your life. It, your job, your house, your hamster, your nose, like things <laughs> like that, you know. Okay. And then you have word cards in your hand. And they'll just be, each card will have one or two words on it. And then it's just up to you to make up an insult using those words. So, oh, nice. you're not, like, it's very, um, like, focused on, like, the silly, funny combinations, right? It's, it's not like, oh, man, you really hurt my feel. Like, I don't think anybody, I've never played with anybody that got hurt, <laughs> right? Because it's, yeah. it's just, like, dumb and silly and like random, random sort of stuff, you know? I, yeah. I remember, uh, one of the, um, uh, one of the ones that made me laugh so much was somebody had the card hamster in front of them and then they had the words uh, night and obese in their hand. <laughs> and, and they said, your hamster is so obese it uses a CPAP machine to sleep at night. <laughs> Okay. But, but it's just like I'm making fun of somebody's hamster, right? It's just like yeah. silly and dumb where it's not it doesn't get like super personal. You know, we yeah. we we play tested it at Gen Con and got a bunch of feedback and all that sort of stuff and and that was one of the the things I liked about it was somebody said she was like a mom. This lady was like, "Oh, this is way more fun than I thought it was going to be." it's an insult game that doesn't get personal and it stays silly the whole time. Yeah. You know? And for me, I like it also because, you know, one of the reasons I don't like a game like Cards Against Humanity 
uh, or what do you mean or something like that is that you have no agency over it at all. There is no sense of creativity or anything. It's the card's been written. I'm just yeah. putting it down. Who cares? Where it's like this game, you get to bring your own creative brain into the game, but yeah. it's it's structured enough that I've I think in the you know I've probably play tested play tested it with you know a hundred and fifty people or something like that, and in that whole time, I can only think of one person that just like couldn't do it. You know what I mean? But just like couldn't come yeah. up. With something. Okay. Uh, um when it comes to this is there still like someone that's like the judge over everyone's insults or no that's one of the things we wanted to stay away from okay no, it's not. so and you know um we it's a three to six player game okay we think that it is best at like four is the sweet spot you know uh yeah. five is also great three you wish there was a little bit more interaction Six, there's a little bit too much downtime in between stuff, right? Okay. So it's like that four and five is perfect. Uh, I think you can totally play it with three or six. It's just not quite as fun as it is with four or five. And so the way it goes is on your turn, you're thinking of an insult, and you can insult anybody else's um, uh, life card that's in front of them. When you yeah. insult their life card, everybody also has retort cards in their hand. Okay. So now you can get into a retort battle with someone. <laughs> so it's like I ins insulted your uh, hamster, and then you have a card that says like, yeah, well, your hamster ran away because you keep singing at night, you know? And yeah. Like, and, and then you just are sort of these one-up, yeah, wells, yeah, wells. And those just like um, go like a uh, – it's like Uno, and you're just matching colors and symbols to keep the retort battle going. It's almost like when we were younger, yeah. having those your mama battles and all that. Yeah, kind of stuff. totally. <laughs> and so, those, those are really fun. Like when it gets to be epic, where it's just like whoa, 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 where you just like keep topping each other. Yeah. So, so that's what I mean. Where it's like there is a decent amount of player interaction. There is a little bit of downtime because essentially two players are participating every turn. Yeah. So like if it's four or five players, you're pretty much you're pretty much even if it's not your turn, you're usually involved like every other turn at least because someone's insulting you or that sort of stuff. We also have a bunch of um, they're more rare in the deck, but uh, there are curmudgeon cards which are just sort of okay. like they're they're just mess with other people sort of stuff cards, okay. you know. And they're supposed to be funny. Like, they've got quotes on them, like, I drink your milkshake or apologize for that. So, like, even if it's not your turn, sometimes you can, like, throw down a card that's just like, apologize for that. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know? Okay. So, it's like, even if you're not involved in the insult, you can still be involved in the game. So, yeah. yeah. What, made, what made you guys decide to call it curmudgeon? I mean, I just love that word. I think it's just, like, a really fun word to say. And to me, it really brings um, a clear image to mind when you think of curmudgeon. And, and it doesn't, like, to me, a curmudgeon has nothing to do with age. It just has to do with attitude, right? Yeah. There, are, there are teenage curmudgeons that are just like, I don't want to be part of anything, you know, and, and stuff like that. So I, I think, uh, you know, when we first met about the game multiple years ago, uh, we... Uh, I mean, pretty much everything in how to play the game is different than it was that first meeting, you know, just of refining it. But the one yeah, thing yeah. that's always stayed the same from the beginning is just calling it Kermud. Like, we both just love that, you know? For, for those that don't know, and their Google Foo is short, Kermudgeon is for a bad-tempered person that's usually an old, grumpy person, right? Yeah, it's like a grumpy person, you know? <laughs> yeah, so that's what I mean. You're just like a grump that's just, like, insulting everything and anything you can. Oh man, you know? I'd be good at that game because I'm so pessimistic <laughs> about everything. Yeah. Oh, and it's definitely a game that's like focused on uh, player interaction and social experience, right? I, I don't think you walk away from the game being like, oh man, remember when so and so won that game? You walk away going, man, remember that joke? Remember that joke? That was so yeah. fun, right? Like that's, 
that's like what I, I like that sort of stuff a lot. So See, you, you made it more for an experience than so much for someone winning or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, totally. And there obviously is a winner in it. There is you getting points. The life cards that you're insulting have points on them. And then at the end of the game, whoever has the most life card points wins the game. I just don't know that I just don't know that that's going to be the focus for anybody when they're playing. Yeah. You know, that was like something that I you know th there are things in play tests that like right I think we've all you, you might have an idea and then you play test it and you're like man this is not working. You know, I thought it was like a fun idea but it just wasn't working and there were things that were said along the path of developing this game that really encouraged me to like keep going and keep working on it. You know, I remember like um, probably when we were halfway done with figuring it out, um, someone, someone said, I don't think I'm funny. This game makes me feel funny. Oh, that's cool. And I was like, yeah, like that's exactly what I want. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, this is a game that anybody can like feel like they get a huge laugh on. You know? yeah, I just look at I just look at this as this is me for to get more fuel so I can insult more people. I mean that's just <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so where can they get it? So it's only available. It comes out in October, so it's available for pre order right now uh, through um, we have a publisher, Twenty Fifth Century Games, uh, who has published like Space Explorers. If you've heard of that one, or mm -hmm. uh, Kingswood um, they've done so they got a they've got a bunch of good games and they're they're publishing it so you can get it you can pre-order it right now on um, on 25th century games website or you can also go to uh, curmudgeongame.com to pre-order it uh, it's being printed right now as we speak so it should be on uh, crates uh, here soon you know it's a Again, it's like one of those things where COVID's just changed so much. It was supposed to um, premiere at Gen Con this oh, year. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously that all changed. Um, so, you know, we'll see it. I'm a little bit nervous because I, I think that anybody who gets it is going to have fun with it. It's just how do people hear about it right now when there are no conventions and there are no you yeah. know, that kind of stuff. Well, I'll put a link for the shop down whenever we post the video up and stuff like that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, Thanks. no problem. I mean, it's one, it's yeah. one of those things, you know, we all got to help each other out. I'm yeah. Sure you'll, you'll, you'll find somebody that ends up enjoying it immensely, and I'm ready to start seeing all the videos of people insulting each other. Yeah. No, yeah. I think it's going to make for really good, like, moments on video, right? There's a lot of, like, when, when we were play testing it, I just, there's a lot of like, oh, you know, type of moments in it. I think I'm, I'm ready for your curmudgeon TikTok. Yeah, totally. <laughs> 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 Got to get those kids on board, you know, on the TikTok game. There you go. So, yeah. yeah. So oh. the last topic we'll go over real quick. Uh, the last thing is just, uh, you know, if you had a new gamer come in, like they were just getting started in it, what game would you tell them to buy? Oh, man. That's such a hard question. But I, to me, I want to give them a game that has a bit of strategy because I don't want to just give them Exploding Kittens or something like that because, you know, there's really no strategy. That game is very fun. There's not really much strategy. Yeah. So I don't know that it, like, opens the world of games to them as much because – I want it to be a game that's like fun and has interesting choices, but it's still like silly and easy to grasp. Yeah. You know? Um, so like uh, for me, like I've been playing a lot of reef recently. Okay. Uh, and I've taught that to multiple people. Like I, I played it with um, my buddy's wife recently, who's like never played any games before. And she really liked it by the end. Another one that I might really do is Deep Sea Adventure. Yeah. You play Deep Sea Adventure. I love that game. And it's, I mean, it's like literally this big, the boxes. So right there, it's like, okay, this game is very cheap. For you. You're going to spend $15 on it. It's easy to learn, but there is still some strategy to it. Yeah. You know? There's like some push your luck. There's some... Um, really trying to like game out like di there's dice rolling there's push your luck like it's it's a really fun 
uh, really fun game. And I think, yeah, I, I'm going to go with that one. Deep Sea Adventure, I think, is like a game that I would tell people who are just getting into it because it's easy to learn, it's cheap to buy, but there is some strategy and it's a lot of fun. Okay. And you can play it with six people. So All I think right. that's a good one too. For I'd that probably one. do uh, Machi Koro. Yeah, that's a great one too. Like one of those ones. Yeah. I mean, I'd do the second version, the, the one yeah. with lights and brights and all that kind of stuff, because it's an easy card game for someone to get behind. But it ha it introduces tokens and all that kind of stuff and to yeah. dice rolling all in one. And I feel like it's enough where it's like you could bring it to somebody and it wouldn't overwhelm them because it's like yeah. oh, it's just a couple. It's just cards. You just have three stacks. Oh, I could do this. It's it's some yeah, easy stuff to follow. I agree. Um, I think that's a great one. So that that'd probably be the one. Now, what is the game that you would end up uh, creeping them out with because you want to talk to them too much about it? <laughs> That's a fun question. Uh, <laughs> man, um, what is the game that I would creep up? Oh, man, I really like this game. And it's like a game that nobody, I feel like nobody knows about. And so I keep talking about it, is The Menace Among Us. Okay. Uh, it's like a really fun social deduction sci-fi game and i love playing it but it's in a real big box and so i think it like worries people you know it's not that hard but you know it's like there's some of those games where it's like the setup people are like whoa like I, this is too much for me and you're like no 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 it's yeah Only halfway there's, done <laughs> there's like a lot on the table but it's not that hard and yeah. so that's a game where I'm always like, who has to play this? And then I'll pull out the box and people are like, that's a huge <laughs> box. I don't want to play that, you know? Yeah. But it's a game I love. It's a game that has, uh, it's like a semi-cooperative game, um, which I think semi-cooperatives are fun too. Cause it's like, there's a, you know, you're working together, but there's somebody throwing a wrench uh, in the, in the um, gears. Uh, and so the menace among us is you are on a spaceship that is broken down and it is up to the crew members to get the energy levels up before the oxygen runs out. But there are multiple menaces on the crew that are intentionally trying to sabotage okay. the spaceship and like get open the airlocks and like do things like that. Uh, and I really like it a lot. I mean, with the giant box thing, I always love how sometimes the box will be way bigger than any of the other stuff. Like, uh, mm -hmm. it's like, it's like there's only you only need half the box. I don't know why the box is so big. Yeah, totally. And that kind of stuff. I think any of those kind of games like that where it's, it requires a lot of upfront talking and all that kind of stuff would probably yeah creep people out when it comes to starting games. I mean, that's why that's why Dungeons and Dragons is so hard for people to get into at first because they're afraid totally. of talking. But that's also how they build the talking skills and communication skills and stuff like that. But, yeah, I mean, games are great for just building all types of skills like that that you're going to use at other points of your life. Yeah, you know, hoarding skills and yeah. anger skills. You know, uh, money management skills. <laughs> Can't people afford this game this month? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, I think there's something for everyone. It's just a matter of finding it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but I think... Uh, we're going to go ahead and call it quits here. Thank yeah, you man, this out. was super fun. Yeah, and, and and to people watching, I also have like a, I have a YouTube series where I'm like recommending uh, fun board games and stuff like that. You know, I bring a lot of comedy into it. So they're like 90 second recommendation videos, but they're very funny and engaging. Yeah, and I'll, I'll post a link to your channel too. So oh, thanks, man. Yeah, Appreciate it. No, no worries at all. Yeah. You know? Now, I do want to see you make some solo rules for Curmudgeon where you have to look <laughs> at yourself in the mirror and just insult yourself. Yeah. You know, well, <laughs> that's really funny. <laughs> oh, look at you with your beard. You look like the Unabomber. <laughs> oh, man. You know, it's just, you know, just because. You know, like yeah. I said, every game needs solo rules now, remember? Yeah, true. <laughs> true. Uh, anyways, well, thanks for having me. This was real fun. Yeah, it was great talking to you. This is like one of my first times doing something like this. So cool. Well, I hope you enjoyed it as well. I did. I did. But yeah, I mean, I, I definitely love to do this again with you sometime or something like that. Maybe over some other topic or something like that. But other than that, yeah. I mean, I think it's I think it's been a good time. 